JP had some nice questions about projectors, and we can talk about them and get the communal the communal input on projectors. And JP, I'll go ahead and just read your question while you're getting up and running. Uh, JP's question was, I'm allocating a bit of my research budget to purchase projectors. Maybe some recommendations for affordable ones that might work well in real-time stuff, extra credit for compact and portable. Also, any cool ideas and tools in Touch Designer to create projection mapping, sketches, and such. Thinking I might take advantage of that and add some projection to my portfolio. JP, I think you're muted still. Yeah, well, I was just letting you finish, so no, no worries at you're all. You're so kind. So nobody normally lets me finish. <laughs> so cool. <laughs> no, but hey, thanks for uh, thanks for checking it out. No um, problem. So yeah, I'm kind of like uh, getting to an exciting part of my research in which I can finally not worry too much about publishing and uh, and I'm almost done with the building part. So mm -hmm. since we're trying to showcase a bit of what we've been doing and everything, um, there is a bit of an, a budget to maybe set up some projection stuff and hopefully get this to a more, get what we've done to more of a public space, perhaps performances or, or, or setting up like it, projects that might be interesting either at school and outside around the city so we're trying to look into possibilities for like a good of an you know kind of like a good for a general purpose good for all situations type of projector that we might be able to use um while trying to keep it easy to carry at all because um the, like just the robots that we've been building and all are hard enough to like carry around so are you going to mount the projectors on the robots around it or we're yeah. I'm still still thinking about it i have to see what i have to work with and then i'll probably figure it out that sounds cool i even lost my train of thought because that's so cool um, nice. but I, that's why i have notes the notes bring me exactly. back to reality. <laughs> um, so there's kind of like a bunch of stuff I can say, and I know we have a couple of projection folks in the chat as well, so they feel free to chime in. Uh, there's kind of three brands I go to for the that mid-range affordable projector line. Uh, BenQ, Optoma, and then ViewSonic. Um, now, those ones I find you'll have a lot of options in that range, which are pretty good. The ViewSonics, I think, are probably the cheapest, if I remember correctly. Uh, you can get a lot of bang for buck out of ViewSonic, although sometimes, depending on the models, uh, which I don't know too detailed of, but uh, I've heard the contrast ratios and the colors aren't as like crisp and beautiful as you know the Optomas and the BenQs. Which I mean, when you think about getting a you know a 3K Lumen projector for 400 bucks, you're like, eh, you know, like <laughs> can't have it all. Um, all right. So I think those are kind of the three brands I would even just start the, the search at. Now, especially since you are far away from us, North Americans, you might even want to open up that search, but I'd say those are the three good brands to start with because you might actually have NECs. So the problem is NEC does make some affordable equipment, but they never make it over to North America for a decent price. So if you see on your side of the waters, like some NEC dealers are have some good prices. NECs are also pretty nice, but I find they're usually more expensive, at least in North America. In terms of specs, and actually Phil was mentioning this in the comments of the question, I'm all about 4.3. All about 4.3. And the reason I'm all about 4.3 is because um, usually you'll get a more affordable projector with better specs. Like, you know, everything about the projector is gonna be better except it won't be 1920, it won't be HD. And there's a lot right. of hype around like the HD and the 4K uh, just because the market is so big for people that want to get like home theater projectors. Cause that's kind of where, when we're doing this affordable projector business, we're looking at consumer stuff, right? And the consumer stuff is always going to be trying to make it easy for people to watch movies at home. So that's why you're going to see right. so many HD projectors and their prices are going to be higher than the four, three projectors, you know, whether they're, um, as low as, you know, 1024, 768, or, you know, anything in between that. And even, because I think 1920, 1200 is the popular HD 4.3 resolution. But right. I don't think you need that much resolution. And I'll come back to resolution later. But, you know, the big thing to think about with 4.3 really comes from the physics of it. When you think about the projector, 
I mean, essentially, you got like a light bulb or an LED, and that's emitting in all directions light. Now, when you think about, you know, you have this thing emitting light in all directions, and even Phil was mentioning this, like, how do you get from this to HD? You basically just block the top and bottom, <laughs> and you have HD. There's no, like, magical way to turn, you know, light emitting in all directions into HD, except just blocking the top and bottom. So, you know, in most cases, you can think about 4.3 as just being less shutters around, you know, your omnidirectional light source. Now, I also think, you know, similarly, the resolution thing is an interesting one. Um, I by no means think most people need HD projector. Like, you know, 1920 by 1080 is nice, but I think especially for things where you can control the scenarios a little bit better, you know, you have more flexibility on moving your projector around, maybe you're in charge of where it gets mounted, uh, you have controlled lighting and things like this. You know, I think most people yeah. can get away with 1280, 720 just fine. Uh, you know, even if you wanted to drop down to something like 10, 24, 768, you know, the big issue with resolution is has to do with distance. Because you got to remember, like, right. the farther your projector gets from the wall and the bigger your image gets, the bigger your pixels get on the wall. So, you know, if you get an alt, and, you know, all, even the, actually, I shouldn't say how far away you get from the wall because it's actually how big your image is. So if you get an ultra short throw, and you put it close to the wall, it makes a giant image, but the resolution is small. Right. Your pixels are, are going to be gigantic. But knowing that that's your limitation, so let's say you get a 10, 24, 768 projector, for example. You know, as long as you're flexible and you know what you're projecting on and you have some control between, oh, okay, well, you know, you think to yourself, oh, well, we, we can see the pixel are too big, so let's move these items a little bit closer together. Uh, I think you can get around a lot of the resolution issues because that's really the big one that I find is just, you know, you start to see a little bit of those lines and the grid effect that you see, like, all the pixels on. Right. But I think, you know, 1024, 768, if you get the 1200 by, I guess, 800 is the 4.3 version of 12, no, sorry, 1280, 720, and then it's 1280, 800 is the 4.3 version, I believe. I'm not good with these projector resolutions, but, you know, the, the 4.3 equivalent of 1200 is probably more than enough pixels. Yeah, 1280, uh, yeah, I, I can, well, as long as it's for, yeah, yeah, uh, for sure. Now, but, interesting, sorry, what's up, what's up, tell me. Yeah, I was just going to add, like, that That totally makes sense, and, and and I don't know if HD would be totally worth it, because the price probably goes up a lot, and if we really, you know, like, if we were in a situation that we really need something as specialized as that, we would be, we'd probably be dealing with a venue that either has their own thing or would be in a position that it's kind of like, if you really need this, then you should probably chip in or something like that. So well, that, renting, that would you know, be more of a... Renting is super affordable to get like a nice projector for a day or two. You know, at that point, then you're getting like a Barco. Right. You know, life's good. Um, but I think that's that's a good thought. And especially like when you think about... You know, it's it's almost like optimization in a sense where it's it's trade offs. So right. you know, what can you trade off off the projector that maybe will get you better specs? So for example, you know, maybe a two K Lumen that's HD nineteen twenty by ten eighty, probably going to be the same price as something that's ten twenty four by seven sixty eight that maybe is ultra short throw and three K lumens or something, right? So all of a sudden that right. trade off of like, I don't need the resolution. And because I don't need the resolution, I can all of a sudden get these other kind of features or specs on the projector. Right. So mm -hmm. another thing to be careful of, um, which I think traps a lot of folks when they're going out for their projector purchases, especially in the consumer market is baloney specs. And you'll see something like a good example is a projector says 4k projector. And then you go to read the this actual specs of it, and it's like 4K input, actual output, 1280-720, or like 1920-1080. Um, so it's just right. something to be careful of like when you're buying a projector, just really take a look at the specs, look at the input resolution versus the output resolution, or sometimes they call it native resolution, is how many actual pixels are on the chip getting pumped to the wall. Um, Wait, uh, is, oh, that, is that kind of a common thing, or...? Like them, Especially them in consumers, because kinda... they'll you'll see stuff that'll be like 4K project. I swear, I'll bring, I'll bring it up right now. Okay, this one doesn't even have specs, but look, check this out. Check this out. Check this out. This is a perfect example. So you know, you see the word 4K input. You know, they don't mention anything about 1080 anywhere on the 
on the output until you get like more deeper into it. It's like, oh, 1080 resolution output, 4K input. Uh, so I think it's just something to be careful of. Some companies right. are going to be more transparent about it than others, but you may even find like if you're just flying quickly and you just see, you know, like 4K projector, 500 bucks, like, oh my God, buy it. You know, just make sure you check the specs right. real quick first because it may actually not be 4K. Uh, and Phil is saying, got to go to AliExpress. I'm sure AliExpress has the best <laughs> nice. examples of what I'm talking about. Um, and ultra short throws, I think, are nice. And I think there's usually like two price ranges for ultra short throws. You'll have like the 0 0.2 to 0 0.6 to 1. That kind of like aspect or lens ratio is probably going to be more expensive because that's like the ultra, ultra short throws. Um, probably the range you'll get is more of like that 0 0.6 to 1 ratio. Um, and that's going to be like a lot of the generic. Actually, I could probably just bring this up. And I should... Oh, this is nice. 4-3 ratio, 3200 lumens, 640. So this is 0 0.9 to 1. That's a good short throw. So you'll see like 0 0.6 to one all the way up to one to one is probably going to be in that price range you're looking. Um, right. Unless you go refurbished, I didn't really think about refurbished, but you can see this refurbished, because these ones with the mirrors, these are going to be the really, you know, like 0 0.2 to one ratio. Oh, wow. uh, it's, it doesn't even have specs, that's the best. Anyway, stuff like that's probably going to be more expensive though, unless you buy like a used unit. Right, that makes sense. Uh, let me see what else I have here. I think lumen-wise, you're probably looking between 2 and 4K. I wouldn't go below 2. I don't think for like a general purpose thing that you're going to use for mapping or any kind of shows that you're putting on or events. And you probably right. won't find anything more than 4K because I think after 4K, it like breaks into the different tier of like, oh, now you want a conference room projector. Uh, and then all of a sudden, your prices jump up again. So I think 3K is probably going to be the sweet spot that I would recommend looking in around. Uh, you know, 2900, 3000, 3200, like in that zone is going to be like a good zone for, for prices. Cool. Then actually Dylan is saying Projector Central. I love this website. Do you know Projector Central? Uh, no, I haven't checked it out. Ooh, let me boy, save welcome. that. Um, let me bring this up. Not only, so Dylan's mentioning it, it's got great resources and reviews. Uh, it also has the best tool in the universe, which is the throw calculator. Um, oh, nice. And it's super hype. So you basically like search for a projector. So let's say, you know, we do get a BenQ and they got all the models in here. Oh boy, do they got all the models. So I know these ones, these 826 ST. And that loads up this sweet little calculator which says, okay, well, if your distance is this far away from the wall and the aspect ratio is set to this much on the projector, you know, the right. screen size is going to be that size and then it can tell you how, the estimate brightness of it and you know for images you will kind of want to be in that green zone if it's in the red zone like maybe your projector is not bright enough uh right super useful tool i highly recommend using this and i think they also have an iphone app that like does this as well which is also pretty helpful uh pico projectors are an option and i don't know if you have heard of pico projectors and I think their whole shtick is like, yo, we make these tiny projectors. Like tiny. Right. Uh, I think I, oh man, I even had this one, I think, back in the day. And uh, they got to show a picture of like somebody with it in its hand. Because it's literally tiny. It's like the size of your phone, like two iPhones stacked, is this projector. Right. Um, come on. So these are good if you really need that ultimate portability. You know, any kind of Pico. Yeah, so like that small, right? Nice. But it comes at a trade-off. Uh, the trade-off being the fans are crazy loud because they're basically like the tiniest, whiniest fans, and they're always on. They're just, <laughs> they're just like on and completely audible all the time. That's one downside to them. Right. Uh, the other one is that because so much of the production goes into the smallification, if that's a technical term, um, you end up paying more for lower specs just because it's smaller. You know, right. for example, like I think that P300 was 400 bucks or 300 bucks, and it only has like 100 lumens on it. 
Um, and now I think they've come a little bit, they've come a long way since then. I think you can get like a pretty decent one, you know, probably in the 500 to 1,000 lumens, but it's still going to be the same price as what you might get in kind of that more traditional, like boxy consumer format. That's probably going right. to be like 3K lumens with, you know, better throw, better colors, better contrast and things like this. Um, so it's the, it's a laptop kind of thing that you can probably uh, afford a better computer if you forego the portability and all. And yeah. Exactly. It's exactly that same trade off, right? Um, so I would say, cool, unless cool. you really need that ultimate portability, like maybe, you know, you want to mount one on a, a robot arm and there's a hard limit on the weight capacity the robot arm can take and only the right. Picos, you know, then it's like, okay, cool. So we have to trade off and do that. Otherwise, I would almost always go for the just the more consumer stuff. Cool. And then Dom is saying the Optoma W515T was posted on VJ form. It's 6K projector for 2000 bucks. Um, so that might be actually worth, like, if you are interested in the used market and Dom, because you know a lot about projectors and I, Dylan, I see you on there. Um, I don't deal much in the used market, but I think it could be a thing that could also bring the price down to if you look for used. Because a lot of the times when these big uh, rental houses and integrators, uh, they seem to clean out shop every couple of years when they, you know, they're like, oh, okay, well, our old projectors are kind of, you know, run out a little bit of life. We got a new batch, right. got to sell the old ones. So you might be able to pick up, you know, something in a tier above for a bit of a better price. So that might be something right. to look into. You could even just hit up a couple of rental houses, be like, "Hey, do you guys have any old old projectors you're selling off?" Because uh, you'll probably get a lot more of the commercial grade stuff from them. Nice, um, uh, cool. That's sorry. Go ahead. We'll some some great recommendations and everything. And kind of on the software end, I guess uh, the part that I was wondering a bit about mm -hmm. is like, uh, uh, well, my experience so far when it comes to projectors has been like touch designer either the way it is or maybe to uh, wrestle avenue like as far as it goes mm -hmm. uh, but if i'm gonna have a, a like permanent access to to this projector i'm kind of wondering about uh, like if there's i don't know if touch designer has any way to make it easier to to do some projector uh, projection mapping or to maybe try and experiment a bit more with that more than anything, because I have access to a 3D printer at um, at school and a laser cutter. And also, if I, I wanted to do like any other fun stuff around it, it's definitely something I can I can use. At least so, during this year, I, I have access to all that. So Yeah, that's amazing. And definitely take advantage of that. So I can tell you there's two tools that you're probably going to want to look at. And actually, I'm, I'm pulling up. Uh, let me share my screen here. Uh, a good intro to both of them is from the summit in 2018. That's what I was, I was trying. I forgot my name for a second. Sorry, uh, Elders <laughs> Projection Mapping. Because I did a workshop at the Touch Designer Summit, which actually oh, cool. was an intro to both of the tools and how to use them. Um, and this covers Cantan Mapper. And actually, maybe I can just open up Touch real quick and show you where those tools are. Uh, nice. Cantan Mapper is kind of more like a traditional 2D projection mapping. So if you think about things like Mad Mapper or Resolume, you know, that idea of you projecting out and then you're kind of drawing masks around the stuff that you want to project on and then you kind of assign textures to them. Uh, that kind of workflow is inside of Cantan. And you'll find actually both of these inside the palette if you go into the tool section. You'll see Cantan Mapper is here. K-A-N-T-A-N mapper. Now the other projection mapping method is more of like this new school like 3D projection mapping. And that might be what you will really have fun with because the idea is based on the concept of having a 3D model in your computer that matches something in real life and then calibrating your camera inside of Touch Designer to match the projector in real life, which then right. has a couple of really cool benefits. One is that it lets you automatically, well, I shouldn't say automatically, nothing's automatic anymore, but it <laughs> really simplifies mapping a 3D object with like a 3D native workflow. And what I mean by that is then you're not worried about like drawing a square on the sides of a building because essentially in the software you have a building it already has a UV map of the texture coming from like your 3D software or, you know, you generate some content and touch. 
you map it onto the building in touch. And then the workflow of Camp Schnapper basically reprojects that from the projector back onto the real life object without you having to, you know, draw a square here and a triangle here and a circle here and like individually put pieces on it. Uh, and that right. workflow is really cool. So that's Cam Schnapper. That's also in the palette. And that video that I was mentioning uh, is a good one because I, I go over not only like how to actually use these tools, but I actually talk about the workflows that are involved in both of them. So like if you're coming from Camtan, you're going to be doing 2D stuff and you might do stuff like this. And if you're coming from Camp Schnapper, you're going to be working in 3D. So your workflow is going to be kind of like this and maybe you're working with these kind of people. Uh, and the nice thing, actually, I think I, I even did a UV unwrap. This is the height, this is the pinnacle of my Cinema 4D career, was a couple of boxes getting, look at, look how, look at this, that is janky. <laughs> nice. <laughs> and it's, it's on YouTube forever, people. I'll never look it down. Um, but I talked about the whole workflow in there. The only annoying thing is that you can't, the projector output wasn't recorded. But I'm pretty good about whenever I'm doing something on the projector, I'm always like saying what I'm doing. So even cool. at the part, there's only a few small parts where it's like I'm like looking at the projector and talking about it. But as long as you kind of follow along what I'm saying with what you're working on, uh, then I think it's it's totally easy to follow. So yeah, I did the whole UV unwrap phase. You know, you bring it in, cam snapper, aligns and points. Cool. That that Cinema 4D part you can probably use just about anything like uh, you can use just about anything. I just figured stuff. I would show that from like you know the know your workflow perspective because a lot of times right. it'll be somebody else that's going to be doing it. So us just having cool. a little bit of insight into kind of what they're going through, so that we can guide them or you know just know what we're supposed to get. But yeah, you can you can substitute yeah. this with anything. You can just do it in touch. Uh, any of those kind of things. Nice. Sounds good. I think those two tools will give you a lot of fun stuff to do. Um, between cool. the two D side of things and the three D mapping. Um, cool. That's Canton Mapper and Cam, Cam Snapper. Right. Yeah. Cool. Cool. Thanks so much. That sounds no like a lot of fun stuff to check out. Hey, folks! Thanks for watching. If you're serious about learning Touch Designer and getting into our interactive and immersive industry, I highly recommend you check out the Interactive and Immersive HQ Pro. It's the only educational resource and community of its kind for touch designer and interactive professionals. You can click the link in the description to learn more about that. And if you like this video, hit that like button. And if you're new here, don't forget to hit subscribe and click on the little bell icon for more awesome free content.